Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today on this Wednesday afternoon in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Actress, author, and businesswoman Linda Dano is here to reminisce about her time playing Felicia Gallant on Another World, playing Ray Cummings on One Life to Live, Port Charles, All My Children, and General Hospital, playing Lena Kendall on Guiding Light, and her most recent role playing Vivian Alamein on Days of Our Lives. Linda's One Life to Live character uh, showed up on all three of those other shows I just mentioned, Port Charles, All My Children, and General Hospital. She is a published author, had her own talk show attitudes, and supports many charitable organizations. Don't forget, if you missed her recent Hallmark movie, it will air again tomorrow night, September 23rd, and I will remind you later on in the show. Please welcome Emmy Award winner, Linda Dano. And how are you? Hi, everybody. Hi, Linda. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, my God. It's such a pleasure. I mean it. I know we had trouble our first time like a year and a half ago. Oh, so. my God. You remember that? Oh, and I, of course, am no help at all. So I just sort of sat there, you know, feeling so bad for you. And But we somehow struggled through it. We did. We, we did. And you, we did. Uh, you, you just said that uh, we had to call your friends later and say that you did this yourself, which you did. <laughs> I but did. We have to thank whoever the friend was to get you that newer iPhone, because that sure helped. That's Jeanette, my old friend, dear Jeanette, who bought me this phone. And I said to her when I opened it, I said, have you lost your mind? Do you <laughs> not know who you were giving this to? I mean, I, I am so inept in all this stuff, this electronic stuff. And it's because I just don't want to learn it. And I, I long for the old days when people wrote letters to each other. And it's hard for me. So I've had to learn a lot of it, the Zooms and the whatever else. There's a ton of stuff. I've had to learn it in order to do an interview or to reach out to someone. Or I went and did, after I uh, finished the, the movie in Vancouver, um, I I had to do some, some voiceover work. Um, and... Oh my God! I thought it when I started it. I thought I'm never going to be able to do this. They're going to, they're going to go. What is wrong with you? You're lit down. You've been working all your life. What's happening? <laughs> because I'm just not comfortable. I'm just not. So uh, I'm getting better, right? I did this. Yeah, you did it. You did it. Well, and I know the fans were really excited for us to chat today. <laughs> Thank you. And God I, bless all of you. <laughs> right. I was reading some of the. Um, comments just as you and I were about to go live and one of them said can't wait for the BDG Big Dano Energy and you know who that oh, is oh. Kevin Ben Kevin Bennett really oh <laughs> Kevin oh my god you see one thing I will tell you about my life and and I'm sure there are many who can agree with me for their lives is that I have been so blessed Having gotten into daytime, uh, I, I started out in nighttime and I was terrified every time I got a job. And wouldn't you know, I got a lot of them and I would, I would, I would somehow struggle my, my way through and had no clue what I was doing. And then I went to daytime, which was like a family. It's always been like a family for all of these shows. And we all know each other, love each other, laugh together, um, do events together. And we become a big giant family. And I, I can't tell you how grateful I am to all of you. I could cry telling you this because I, I can never, ever, ever complain about this glorious life of Felicia and then Ray Cummings and oh my God. And then I just did Alice, uh, an exec producer of a soap opera. And it was just for the, for the Hallmark movie. For the yeah. Hallmark channel. Yeah. It was so much fun. And oh, I have great. and I have the people who are listening to us right now and watching us, I have them to thank because I have been around all this time because of you. And I, I put my head down and I say my prayers and I thank you, each of you, because you're just great to me. You're great to me. Well, you just mentioned, you know, when you were doing primetime and how nervous you were. Oh. When, when I started to promote this, uh, your interview with me, Orla Cassidy, 
who played Doris on Guiding Light. Right. She she wrote me a note and said, my very first job on a soap was another world. In my first scene, on my very first day, my character had to fire Linda Dano. I was 23 <laughs> years old playing Sloan Wallace and Linda will never oh. know how utterly terrified I was. <laughs> oh, I do know. Oh God. Do you know that, I'll tell you a little secret. Uh, the first Christmas that I was in New York working on One Life to Live, the makeup, no, not the makeup, the wardrobe people, I'm embarrassed to tell you this, they <laughs> bought me pampers because I wet my pants so many times when I was working because I was so terrified. You know, the speed of daytime will kill you if you're not used to it. I, I, I mean, you do a hundred pages in, in a day. Where and you were used time, to it. <laughs> and I, I, really? And I just thought, I, I'm i never going to live through this. I'm not. And, um, and I did with great, great love and respect for everyone who worked on that show and couldn't do more to help me. They were just great. But Took me a while, boy. Tom Selleck, an old friend of mine from 20th Century Fox days, we were both under contract at the same time. And he said to me, um, you know, if you really want to get good at acting, go do a daytime soap because you'll learn quick because it's hard and you really have to know your stuff. And you know what? He's right. He really is right. So... Uh -huh. Yeah, I, 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 you, you took acting and dancing and singing lessons with Tom, at from 20th. what I understand. Twentieth, <laughs> yes. Wow. We, uh, we actually did a scene together for all the heavyweights, all the corporate people, you know, the, the people who ran Twentieth, and they'd make us go out and do these little scenes. Um, why I really don't know, but. I convinced Tom that he had to smack me across the face because it, it was in the scene. It was written. And I kept goading him and saying, now you've got to really, really hit me because then I'll cry and we'll really look like we know what we're doing. <laughs> he gave me a left hook from down here. And, you know, Tom is huge. And he <laughs> hit me so hard that I fell down and knocked down a set of flat. And I cried, all right. And I was so, didn't matter how it hurt. I had his handprint on my face. I thought he was going to kill himself. He, he just, he, he felt he's such a great guy, such a nice man. And I thought he was just going to break down because he thought he really broke my job, which he didn't, but he did make me cry. So I was tickled pink so wow. those were the early days when no early days nobody knew what they were doing Linda? yeah where did you where did you grow up i grew up in north long beach california and i went back there with vivian who worked with me for many years and oh yeah vivian stern <laughs> vivian stern and 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 um we went to my my home that i lived in from the time i was like three years old and it was on uh, Atlantic Avenue, and it it was a an office, a real estate and a and an insurance office that my father did, as well as being a welder, and and my mother next door opened up a, a knit shop because my mother could really really knit, and I took uh, Vivian and my friend Jeanette, I took them to this house just to. See just to see if it looked the same and and I walked up these little steps a little tiny courtyard and these little steps and I walked up and I knocked on the door and a little face behind a curtain lifted that curtain and then went ah! <laughs> <laughs> she obviously watched Felicia go on, on another world and she came to the door she had been living there forever her daughter had taken off and left the baby, her granddaughter, and she was raising that little granddaughter. We sat, we had tea together, all of us. I then wow. sent her some mail and pictures of me, and I signed things. But, you know, those are- Did she know before I, you were in her window that you lived there? No, you, no. <laughs> and what was so crazy about it all was, 
everything in there was the same things that were in there when I lived there with my parents and my brother. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My parents, obviously, I didn't remember this part, sold it. When, when they sold the house, they sold everything with it. And so it was truly like going back in time. Um, and it was, it was very surreal and very sweet, very sweet. And, um, God bless her. Yeah, you know. Just... We're, we're, wouldn't we all love to look out our window and see Felicia Gallant just? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Probably some. Probably not so much. But, but yeah. So who, it, who, or what happen. influenced you? You know, going down this acting path. You know, I didn't mean to. I didn't want to. I, 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 I I'm a designer. I've always been a designer. I, I never was on a, in, in anything at school, in high school or college. I, I didn't act. I, I painted backdrops. And, um, and then I, I took a friend uh, with a friend uh, to, to uh, Los Angeles, to Beverly Hills. She was going to meet Nina Blanchard, who was a famous, famous um, agent for uh, models and it actually was connected to Ford agency out of New York. And I went with her and, and, and as a, as someone to go in the car with, not to be. Right. <laughs> not I just to get kept, a job. Just, yeah, not no, to get I a job yourself. Company. And she went in, saw Nina and Nina came out with her and Nina said to me, oh my God, who are you? And I said, Oh, I'm, I'm Linda Wildermuth and, and I'm just a friend of, of, of uh, her name was Jeanette too, interestingly enough, as my friend now. And um, and I said, I'm just, I just rode with her in the car. And she said, come on in, let me talk to you for a minute. And I said, oh, uh, uh, really, I don't. And it was my friend who said, no, no, go on in, go on. You know, go talk to her. I, you know, went, okay, all right. So I walked in, she talked to me. She said, can you have some pictures taken of yourself? I said, well, with with what? I, I. <laughs> I um, mean, my mom doesn't have a camera or anything. We don't have anything like that. And she said, uh, well, can you borrow one maybe? I said, I, I, I guess. I don't know. I'd have to ask my mother. So I went home, took a, a roll of pictures, little snapshots, little things, <laughs> took them back. My parents went with me this time because my father didn't trust anybody about when it, when it had to do with me. And um so we are back up to Beverly Hills. She wanted me to sign with her. I said, I have to go home and think about this and talk to my parents about this. And my parents talked to her and I ended up signing with her. And the very uh, first job I got was for Max Factor. It was for um, curl free. I had very, very curly hair all my life, still do. And, um, and I ended up, getting that job and first time I flew on a plane to do a, a whole shoot, you know, in Chicago for some reason. And I, you know, I, all of it was so accidental. And so uh, I just, you know, I didn't, I had no idea what I was doing or what this would mean and would anything come of this. And I still wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be a, uh, I wanted to make designs for clothes or, design homes. I love, I love all of that. I still do. And were you making clothes back then at that age? No, I wasn't, but I was doing sketches and drawing and I was very interested in everything you could see on TV mm -hmm. that was about that or in, in Vogue. And, you know, I, I'd save my money because I got an allowance and I would save my money and buy Vogue and, and Bazaar and Oh yeah, you know. Sometimes I those, I would those an actor, yeah. Sometimes those life happenings, those moments yeah. of random thing of her, like saying you should get your picture taken, and you know, are the are really like they just open doors that you never, never. expected. Never. And I always wanted to eat. I, I still do. I struggle with weight all the time. I always have, and I, you know, and I had to be yeah. so thin, and oh. God. And then I went through a whole period where I did bulimia, believe it or not. And I talked about that in one of my books mm -hmm. that I wrote because, um, cause young girls are particularly, um, are driven to that because they want, they want to be an actress or a model, or they want that 
life or they want to right. be like those girls in, in Vogue magazine and they'll do anything to get it. And it ends up in many cases ruining your life. It's, it's so interesting because you're ah. talking about picking up and going to a magazine stand. Right. You know, sadly, you know, girls see this daily Maybe. bombarded, you know, between Facebook and Instagram. And it's oh just God. so in front of them that it's, you it, know, it, it's, it's, it's even probably crazy. more dangerous today. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Uh, uh, wow. And and there's, you know, and they're very, it's a very um, private illness uh, you don't tell anybody about it and it's um you 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 hide things and um yeah no i what, I what helped being... you the most in in getting better honestly <laughs> probably my husband frank i did it for a long time 25 years i did oh, bulimia wow. off and on oh yeah for 25 years how i didn't lose all my teeth and and ruin my insides, I don't know. But you got lucky. I, I loved Frank so much that it just didn't seem like it fit our profile, if you will. We were so happy and it was so fun. And I thought always all along that if I kept all this up, I would ruin my life. And and somehow I couldn't stop it because I I really couldn't eat. And then my dad got very sick and got Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And in those days, we didn't know what that was. I, I never heard the name before. And I, I ended up going with my mother and Frank. We took my mother to Europe. And we went to Hungary at one, in one of our stops. And we went to the baths there, you know, and you could... Mm -hmm sit in the baths and anything. And I was so heavy. I got up to like 180 pounds, something like that. I quit, quit weighing at that after that. And, and, and I knew I was in trouble and I couldn't understand why another world didn't fire me. And they didn't, no one said anything to me, nothing. And when I look back on that, I'm so grateful because I don't know what would have happened then. I don't know. But I, I came home from that trip and I sat in my living room in, in our apartment in New York. My mother was up in her bed and uh, my father was in a nursing home because he, he, he got, would get violent and he, mm -hmm. I couldn't have him in the house. He, he was too dangerous. And, um, and um, I prayed to God, of course, and I, and I begged him to help me. And I said, I, I'm going to ruin my life, everything I ever worked for. And I'm, it's going to be over. And it will be my own fault. And, and I, I need to be strong now. And I, I need your help. And from that moment on, that night, I turned it around. I, I started to be kinder to myself. I started to be, you know, more thoughtful about what I ate. And, um, and I didn't try and, you know, not eat at all because I knew that would be destructive. And I really got it together and lost the weight, lost it all. I said to Frank months later, I said, how come you never said anything to me about how fat I got? And he said, because I love you. And I was hoping you would come around and you did. And I thought, wow. love this guy, love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he loved you. He knew you would. He knew you would. Well, I would, I guess. And I yeah. I didn't know I could. I really well, speaking could. of Bay City and another world, you made your debut, I believe, on January 6, 1983. Do you remember, you know, an agent calling you about the part? Yes. Did you have to screen test? Yes. Tell us. Yes. Paul Rausch was the exec producer. Ah. <laughs> yes. And uh, I had heard lots of things about him. I <laughs> didn't want to go do a soap again. Um, I met Jeff Ryder. I don't know, Alan, if you knew him. Jeff Ryder? Yeah. I Jeff don't know him personally. He's yeah. living in Florida now. We're still friends. Oh, that's great. And, yeah. He, he's fabulous. Anyway, he was at Robin Strasser's townhouse. We all had been invited, been invited there for a dinner. And he, Jeff Ryder said to me, listen, I've got a character coming on Another World that, God, I think you'd be perfect for. And I said, oh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to do daytime anymore. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm working on uh, clothes. I'm so close to a lot of the shows and I'm loving it. And mm, I don't think so. You know, he said, well, 
come on, just think about it a little bit. Maybe we should read the script. And Frank's sitting there with me and he said, Linda, come on, read the script. You might love this character. I said, oh God, okay. Okay, I'll read the script. That's very sweet of you. I'm really very appreciative. But you know, it just, it hasn't been such a great run for me in one life. I played uh, Gretel. And then I went over to World Turns and played a character that also I didn't have a lot of fun with. And, and I just thought maybe this wasn't for me. So I read the script and it, it was Felicia Gallant, a very dazzling character. And they were, the scene was, it drove me up in a, in a Rolls Royce with a hat and outfits and diamonds and <laughs> all, this, all this stuff I love. And I, and I liked her, I liked her a lot. And she had a real edge. She wasn't, you know, she wasn't, um, she wasn't sweet like that. She, she was tough. And uh, I had to agree to terms, you know, like you do before you go on a reading. And so I did that. I, and then I went and read. And I read with Stephen Schnetzer, who oh. I knew from one life. Um, so we weren't friends, friends like we are now. We're like, you know, now we're like a... <laughs> old married couple he and I uh, <laughs> we really are and um, so he, I said to him at one point I don't think I can do this I, I really don't think I, I'm right for this part and he looked at me I will never forget this he looked at me so 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 intent and he said are you kidding me <laughs> you are Felicia Gallant you don't know that I, I went I, I don't I, Really? You think I could do this? He said, oh, dear God, Linda, come on. Well, that turned it around a little bit for me. I got less afraid of it. And uh, I went to work. Now, the thing I remember most about my first day there was I, when I got to the studio in Brooklyn at the front desk was a huge bouquet of flowers from the loveliest man maybe ever, Doug Watson. Wow. Who gave me flowers and said, you have no idea how thrilled we are to have you here. That's beautiful. I mean, you don't hear that that often. You don't. You know. You don't. Yeah. And it became my class. home for it's 18 class. years. It is class. Class. It is class. And the day that Doug died, I thought the world would end. I really never believed the show would go forward because he was such a gentle giant force for another world. He was. And, um, but it did like all things, I guess, you know, and, um, and uh, so many stories, Alan, really so many great stories. Um, what, well, what was, you know, if Paul was your first EP at <laughs> another one. <laughs> Right. What was he like that you remember? He liked the fact that I ha I was a clothes person. I liked to dress, and I think he loved that. He wanted me to help him dress his wife. And I thought, <laughs> this could be a problem if I did this. <laughs> yeah. This could be the end of me. I, <laughs> I don't think I should pursue that. But uh, yeah, no, he. I liked him a lot because he was powerful, and he was also very attentive. He was strong and he was, uh, I'm sure, difficult in a lot of ways. But my father was strong and difficult in a lot of ways. And I loved him more than anything. So I'm used to that. I'm used to that kind of guy. Frank was always attentive to detail. Like, yeah. You know, paid attention to detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very, very much. Caitlin yeah. was asking, she would love to hear about your enduring friendships with Stephen and Anna and everyone. I know you, you've talked them. about that. You see yeah. a lot of them. All I see the them time. all the time. I, I, I mean, pandemic set us all back, but um, we, we, we remain great friends. In fact, I'm going to do a reading with Anna Holbrook on the 28th. Oh, great. Uh, Is it open to the at, public or? No, I'm afraid not. It, it's it's a reading for the for the writer to you know get a sense of, of, of what he's written and see changes he wants to make. I, I don't know this writer, uh, but I know Anna. So <laughs> I'm going because of her and it, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun. 
And I, I've done a couple of those with Stephen where we've done readings and there was an audience, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, we had, we have, Stephen and I have the best time, but then I, I it's like, it's like um, Mark Derwin, who you helped me to say something back to him because I told yeah. him very good at any of this. So, <laughs> uh, and I wanted to, because the last time I saw Mark was at uh, Bobby Wood's surprise birthday party in California. In fact, Long Beach, California, because Bobby and I both come from that part of the world. And, um, and so I hadn't seen him since then. And uh, so we exchanged, you know, a little letter to each other uh, today. And, uh, but You'd be so surprised at how many, many, many friends we all are to so many of us. I and mean, we're friends with people from all the different shows. We still see everybody. Um, we get together. We have dinners. I have a huge Christmas party every year at my house. Um, and they all come. And it's just, it's just been a life that when I look back on it, I can't believe, I can't believe. Yeah, and it's not it. just in front of the camera. Like I said, I read yeah. that quote from Kevin, who's tuning in today because of working with you and so many. And uh, one another fan, Diana said, I remember that first scene, you came on Another World in the early 80s. Linda Dana, you're amazing. Oh. I mean, speaking of, you know, like we said, you and I've talked, the fans, um, you've told, you know, so many stories from all the shows that you've been right. on. Right. Right. And you have a relationship with, with I these do. fans. I Is there do. any any moment with fans that stick out or Oh um, gosh, yeah. I have I have a group of girls that call themselves the Dano girls. And <laughs> they when I was working, still working in another world and, and then after, I mean they came to the Cape. They came to the Cape and watched me in a in a play that I did there. Um there we We've also, I've had them here at my house and they, they stayed at a, a tiny little bed and breakfast uh, in the next town over. And we spent the day here, we had lunch, we talked, we laughed, we told stories. Oh no, I, I, I have stories like that. I have a story about a young, young girl who was very ill with cancer mm -hmm. and her mother reached out to me and I wrote her, and and along with my little note, I sent her a Felicia Gallant hat. I went to the wardrobe and said, is there a hat that I could part with as Felicia that I could uh -huh. send to someone who would really embrace this? I did. They gave me a hat. I sent it in a letter for me and said to them, anytime you can leave it was she was canadian come from canada and come down here i'll give you a tour of another world and you can meet me and and some of the some of the other actors and they came they came her mother and her she ended up getting well she got uh, past so this and of course sent me a letter that made me cry like crazy because it was all about, I did this because you made me, you inspired me to do this. I felt like I was doing like that movie, that baseball movie where he does this thing with this kid and the kid gets better. And I thought, oh my God, because I see those things in movies, but you never think they'll happen in, in regard to you or that's something you might have done to help somebody. But was a great moment and a great a great relationship um but and, that's, and you still have a relationship all all these folks are tuning oh, in yeah. oh, to, yeah. today oh yeah oh yeah and i occasionally put something out or a picture with john bolger or steven or whoever i mean you know whoever i happen to be with at the at that moment and um Oh, I love! John oh my Bolger. God, the, love John. Things Bolger. come, 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 <laughs> flying in about that. I, I just, I love doing it for them, and I love doing it for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another fan, Linda, just wrote, "My mom and brother were watching a Hallmark with you in it, and it was my brother that exclaimed." Felicia Gallant. I wonder <laughs> if she will wear one of her capes. <laughs> oh, no, I wish. I wish. I did wear some of my own clothes in this last film. And um, and 
Oh God, it was so fun. And it, 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 the, the audience that's watching right now, and if you haven't seen the film, A Day in a, oh, oh God, what's the name of it, Alan? Now I forget. It's, yeah, hold one second. Uh, one a day in the, it, a little daytime drama. That's it. You know why I struggle with the name? Because we called it something else in the beginning, and I, that's in my head, and I can never remember the second name. Anyway, um, I I was so thrilled to do this part because I got to play an exec producer, and of mm. course, my my all time favorite exec producer was Jill Fern Phelps. Hands down. Oh, I love hearing I, that. I, I had a wonderful I, I, interview with her. Oh, uh, I know you did. She told me she had <laughs> with you, and she's genius. She's brilliant. She's generous. Uh, I don't know when she sleeps. Uh, she's just, <laughs> she's just she's just great. And I and I thought of her the whole time I was doing this film. Oh, I love that. And it wasn't a film about you know making some joke about daytime at all. It was very respectful, and I was pleased about that i would well, what a nice tribute to her absolutely yeah what a nice tribute to her absolutely to well her. you know the wardrobe for felicia was such an incredible part of your character's being right, right. can you talk right. about that collaboration that you had well with you know it's it, the costume first, designers yeah at first it was just i couldn't believe you'd walk into bergdorf's and you know, cost was nothing. They didn't even blink. And they bought expensive things. And as the years and years go on and go by, you know, that gets less and less and less because the budgets get less and less and less. So, but in the old days when I was there in the 80s, 90s, wow. Um, that's why when I got so heavy and couldn't fit in all of them, uh, I expected them to fire me on the spot, you know. Yeah. And they didn't. And they never said anything. They didn't yell at me. They didn't call me in and threaten me. Nothing, nothing at all. And um, so I, 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 I used that as part of how I got back to the other side because how kind they were and, you know, and they helped me with that. Um, so, but, oh my God, the clothes were just, and, and wasn't just the suit or the dress. It was everything that went with it. It could be the hat and the fur and the jewelry and the shoes. And, oh my God, it was like being, it was like being, I don't know, Cinderella, you know? And, um, I loved it. And of course, when the show ended and it was over, um, the wardrobe department and the studio let everybody take whatever they wanted for clothes. And of course, my clothes were just spectacular. I still have a lot of them, a lot of them. And I still wear them and I get that feeling, you know. <laughs> I'm Felicia. Do, do you slap anyone? <laughs> yes, yes, no. And I have all the feather boas and I, and I very often will wear one. Oh, yeah. I, I always that. said, if the day I start to wear feather boas, I am going to quit playing this character. And boy, was that a lie. I, <laughs> I use them in my own personal life. I, I became so, so comfortable with them. Yeah. Really fun. God, I, I had 18 years of the most fun ever. Truly. Some, some incredible people. Well, we just got a hello from Cork in Ireland. Ireland. Says, I loved another world. Kerry Murphy from Cork. Ireland. Oh my God, Terry, how sweet. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's incredible. That amazing. Yeah. yeah, it really, it really is. Can you share memories of your, your gals, Alicia Coppola, Robin Christopher and Ala Karat? Of course. Uh, all, uh, first all of all, of I, I did a show with Alicia and she oh. was a pip. I loved her. She's a crazy little thing. <laughs> and, and and boy, can she act. And did we have fun and yell at each other. And oh, my God. It was. But I am a very, very close friend of all three of these kids, especially Robin and especially Alicia. Um, it's 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 like the children I never had because uh, I've never had babies. And so I really, I, that's always been the saddest part of my life is that I never had my own children. Mm -hmm. But God, were they like my children? And they still are. They call about 
questions it can be about anything a, a meal it can be about listen i've got this script and what do you think and what do you, do you think i can play this and you know amazing amazing and i'm and i'm going to go and do her her podcast alicia's i haven't done oh, it couldn't wow. do it but because i was in vancouver but I, I now that i'm back again home uh we have to make a time and i just it's my it's my fault i have to do that i have to arrange something but and then I have the great luck of having Matt and, and, um, and, uh, oh, see, I go blank, blank. It's my age when you can't remember someone's name. Oh, it's Bobby, not, I mean, I, you know, me oh. too. <laughs> no, just what? wait, Alan. What's just the character wait. who you're trying to think of? Um, my other daughter who played, who played Lorna, who played Lorna first. Not Alicia, um, Robin. 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 And I see Matt and Robin at my Christmas party. Alicia hasn't come because she lives in California, but the kids live in Pennsylvania, so they drive down. And um, and my God, it's so fun to see them interact and be with other friends from another world and other shows. And everybody has such a good time, truly. So yeah, they, these are great kids and beautiful girls all three of them are gorgeous girls and they've done well all of them that's, that's awesome i i might have to ask you to connect me i'll i'll give you my oh, email to send of course. to send to send to robin and ala of course i know fans would love to see them on on the they show would. i know they would this is my phone ringing i uh, do apologize don't worry I about it i think it's one of those robo calls i get about is it isn't 15 it all Day. Isn't it? Isn't it always? I I, I mean that's all we get it. today. That's all yeah, we get. Yeah, I today. have a new one that says on my phone. It says police sheriff, and the first time I I I uh, answered it, I thought, you know, oh my god, it's the police. I really thought it was the police, and he said something, and he 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 was very threatening, like I was about to be arrested. And I thought, oh my God, this should be against the law. How yeah, we. It, 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 I get something yeah. about my car insurance daily. Right, <laughs> right. exactly. Oh God. Anyway, anyway. Um, Susie just said I subscribed to Soap Opera Digest for the recaps and stayed on for Linda's style column. I have three of her beveled mirror stands in my dining room and you think do. of her gratefully every day. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Oh, that see now, now you're talking about the area of my life that I just love beyond. I love great clothes, designing, putting them together, dressing people. I love that. Men Who are some of your favorite designers today? <sighs> Any new ones that you? I don't like a lot of designers today. I. Mm. I I, but I like more elegant looks. I like uh, um, I like s some of of uh, Donna Karen, uh, but then she starts to get into something strange, and I don't like it as much. I like more classic looks um, with with style. Like if you see a woman walking down the street and she's got, let's say, a black dress on, it could be a it could be from Sears. It could be just nothing, a little simple dress. And she accessorizes that thing. She will look like a million dollars. You will never, ever know that it's very inexpensive. And every woman can have that. And men, everybody can have that look. And I'm not saying a black dress. I'm saying anything that it might be, just something classic. And then you accessorize it with the right nylons the right shoes the if you're an old lady like me you can still have a young fresh look i'm not talking about looking like some some crazy old lady that wears you know mini skirts i'm not talking about that but i'm talking about you know finding a look for yourself that doesn't add to oh dear god i am so so old you don't have to be. You cannot. You don't have to feel like that, and and I think it's all about that, feeling good about yourself. And uh, you know, I I had my face done. Uh, you all know because I was so blatant about it. I I just announced it on Regis <laughs> and Kathy Lee. Lee. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. And and I never understood women who don't 
you know, help each other. They, we all can help each other because we, we can advise and we can agree and we can say, no, no, you know what you need to do? You need to get this. And, and to make a study of yourself and the things that you are, you know, available. Things that, you. Thing, and things that work for you. Exactly. Well, you know, when, when I was promoting this, you know, I told you that Orla had reached out. Um, another person had reached out when I started promoting that, this, and it was one of your designers, Sean Dudley Reeves, who, oh. said the fo- who said the following, I honestly owe my career in daytime to this amazing woman. How does that make you feel? And why don't you tell him yourself? He's right here on screen. <gasps> oh, my <laughs> God. Hi, Honey, baby. How are you? I'm okay. I'm, I'm going to start to cry. Me too. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> you and I cry all the time. <laughs> been a long I, time, darling. Been a long sweetheart. time. How have you yeah, been? Yeah, just a few years. I'm okay. You are? I'm okay. What are you doing? I'm good. He's, I'm he's here at General, General Hospital. Hospital. In AB, at ABC with Frank Valentini. You are. Yeah, I've been here 10 years. You're kidding. Well, you're in New York then. No. No, I'm, I'm in LA. You're in California. You're in yeah. California. They made me uh, move to LA. Uh, you can do that. You you know. <laughs> we all have yeah. to do certain things. I just got off of a, of a, a two week where I was in, in quarantine. That was different. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, it was all right. I watched movie after movie after movie. Um, but, you know, you just kind of sit there all day and night. Um, yeah. So I, I just want to say, yes, when he started promoting this talk with you, um, I did post that I owe my career to you. And I do. And I, I just you wanted to not- jump on and say thank you for believing me in me um, at a time that was just so special. And you believed in me. And you said, hey, give this kid a try. Give the give the kid a try. And there's this like scared little quiet guy. And you you helped me through uh, so much in those early years. I learned so much from you. And I still to this day carry these lessons what that you've taught me. What a treat this is to so, see you and talk I, to you. I still cut out the sleeves of women's blouses. You do. (laughs) (laughs) Hear him, ladies. Hear him. One of the great tricks it is. The first time Linda cut the sleeves out of one of her blouses, I was like, what are you doing? (laughs) He he had a heart attack. Hey, Sean, Kevin Kevin Bennett is watching and says he misses you, too. Oh, Oh. (laughs) Kevin. Everybody, um, Sean, you see, you we know, were yeah. truly a family. We were, we oh, were Lord. like I can't explain it really. Um, I was just well, you, thrilled you to death. Out in Brooklyn, part of being it. out in Brooklyn, I think is Maybe. a different. You, Maybe you're, 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 you don't. You, not so many people leave the studio because you're you're stranded out there. Yeah, you know, no, not the, me. The, I went out. <laughs> <laughs> not me. I went everywhere because but you know. It, e- yeah. Each of these shows that I've worked on, there is that that familial atmosphere and it's yeah. i think it's unique to this little place in the industry we're in yeah. and we are we're fighters we we are asked we are. to do so yeah. much um so quickly and we all do it together so i think that really helps to bond us and and we're with each other for hours and hours and oh, hours yeah. a day we see we see each other more than we see our own families we and really I see a little too much of some of you sometimes, you know, but uh, <laughs> right. and, and we, we deal with each other's vulnerabilities because yeah. we, we're all in this pressure cooker together. together. And, yeah. and when you have someone like Linda rolling through, it just, it's, she's so creative and so energetic and you just, you go with it. And that Linda and, and on another world, we had Vicky when we had all of these amazing people that, that just got in there and did it, you know? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, to the- Sean, do you have a favorite outfit you dressed her in? Oh, (gasps) jeez. So many, (laughs) so many. There were so many, you know- She said she has a lot of boas at the house. (laughs) She does have a lot of boas. One of my ultimate, yeah. Yeah. One of my ultimate favorites was and she obviously will remember this, the Emmys, because we've talked about it so many times over the years. Uh, 
one of the Emmy outfits that we sent her to the Emmys in. It was this beautiful white, and she was actually wearing pajama bottoms that we pulled from her closet. I was. The, I was. The silk, silk pajama <laughs> bottoms and this beautiful white top and and oh, God, jewels it was like... from Van Cleef and Arpels and <laughs> yeah yeah and cool. um gorgeous. and she looked gorgeous. fantastic so gorgeous yeah gorgeous. there were so there were just too many outfits it was one of the things that I was thinking of this morning when I was thinking of Linda early in the first couple of years I was on uh, another world they did a focus group and Procter and Gamble loved doing focus groups and I went to <laughs> sort of the results um, portion of the focus group. And they were telling us things that the fans had talked about in these, uh, these focus group meetings. And one of the things they said, and looked right at me, um, and one of the things they said is, you know, the fans miss how, how glamorous the show used to be, especially Alicia Gallant. And I thought about it for a second and I said, you know, and I was very bold, I said, you know, I it's hard to, it's challenging to make Felicia Gallant when she is pouring coffee in a coffee shop and a bookstore. <laughs> and at the time she was running a bookstore. Now it's yes. very nice and her, her life got to this place, but she was in a coffee shop in a bookstore and she was in, uh, uh, often we saw her in the hospital. And I said, a coffee shop bookstore isn't glamorous. If you right. want Felicia to be glamorous, write glamorous storylines. Give her her glamour back because it's not there. And they did. And they and, did. And we moved forward with pushing a glamorous Felicia Glant again. So, Thank Sean, you. before I let you Thank go you, back honey. to work, <laughs> before I let you go back to work, what do you think yeah. you've you learned from Linda that you've taken everywhere else to Guiding Light to General Hospital? Oh, it's it's more of a technical thing. I've learned to create an outfit, a look head to toe. From the head to the toe, yeah. the jewelry, the the yep. the, the, the pants, That's the what shoes. I was saying. Right. Head to toe. Head and to toe. you find the head to toe and you finish it. Every time I pull an outfit for this show, I do head to toe. So uh, so that would be one of the more important uh, lessons I've learned. And to just be to be um, bold. And not oh. afraid, yeah. Because she's yeah. not afraid. She's no. bold. So, <laughs> no, I'm not. Afraid. There you go. <laughs> oh, Thank you for stopping by, you. Sean. All right, I've got to get back to work. I love you. Liz. All right, and, uh, Sean, you're amazing. Say hello to say hello to uh, Frank Valentini for me. I I will. I'm about to go okay. up and see him. So yes, I'll okay. Talk go to give him a big kiss mwah, and, mwah. Say, I, I and miss good him. to see you, Alan. You too, as always, Sean. Love you. All right. See ya. Bye, Sean. Bye, bye. Bye, baby. Bye, honey. Oh, God, what a love... treat. Thank Good. you. Thank You're you, so Sean. welcome. I loved reading what he wrote that he owes his, you know, you've worked with a lot, you know. I have. I'm so blessed. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I have. And, and and what you want to do is you never want the family that you create in whatever part of, of your life you're in. You never want to lose it. And, and it's just so hard because we all get other jobs and we go places and we, and we lose contact. And, and, you know, it, it's, it's what I said to Mark Derwin this morning in my letter. I said, you know, you, my, I, I felt this surge of happiness when I saw your name because it was a kinder, gentler time when Mark and I were working on One Life and we were fun and it was like, ugh. well, we're all kids. And, and all Mark, Mark just, are kids. I mean, yeah. How, you know, how is it? It's impossible not to smile in Mark's company and yeah. yours, but you know, Mark's a, got that. He's got he, that he, thing. Yeah. He's got he that warmth. He, yes, he, just he really, does. He, he does. really has that warmth. Um, you know, after Frank's passing, Ellen Wheeler came to you to mm. do Guiding Light mm. and you, and you almost didn't take it, but she, she, she worked with you. She what did. was what, what was the one demand you wanted? <laughs> All right now, don't be upset with me, okay? <laughs> I, I, I have never died in any show I have ever been on, ever, and I always wanted to die. You know, the, the drama. You know, I, I'm bold, like Sean said. I'm bold, and and she said, "Excuse me." I said, "No." <laughs> now listen to me. I want you to kill me, 
but I want it to be really bloody. I want to have those things in my mouth that you chomp down on and blood comes gushing out of your mouth. I want that. If you can give me that, I'll do the part. <laughs> and she, what was it like she working said, for her? You're insane. I know that. I know I'm insane, but that's what I want. And you give me that and I'll do it. She's such a great talent. Ellen Wheeler. She I mean, you meant to be a tech producer. As right? an actor, she with... was spectacular. Yeah. She played the twins. Yeah. yeah. She was un she was two people. You know, hard to play twins and make them really different. Um, it's 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 a it's an acting um, oh, it's hard. I, I can't even imagine. I don't know if I were asked to do that, if if I could do it. Um, cause it's difficult. It's really difficult. And she was seamless. I mean, she could really make it happen. You really believed you were watching two other people and great, great actress, great talent, great. Um, really, she could see what she could see what she was reading. She could, she could, she could understand how it should be played before it was ever even given to an actor. So she, she was really a gifted, a gifted talent. Yeah, I love. Do you remember I, much about working with Beth Ellers and Rob Bogue on Guiding Light? Your warden I, I, and your prison, your prison mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My prison mate, and I wore an orange jump jumpsuit. Jumpsuit. Oh, yeah. I was hot. I got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and all I dreamt about was bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. I, but I have to tell you a cute story. A woman up here who works at the town hall in this little little town I live in, and her mother is a huge Guiding Light fan, or was. And um, so when I died, every time she'd see me at a, a van, a little town thing, or in the market, or whatever, she'd say, "You've got to come back to Guiding Light." And I said. I'm dead. Don't you remember the blood? I'm dead. And she said, I don't care. People die, but they come back. I said, not this time. This time, no, I'm dead. Okay. So I finally got to do a role that I've never done. And I, I really embraced it. And I was in a bus and I had that orange suit on. Oh, it was fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> had you been a prisoner before? Yes. Yes. I was a prisoner once in uh, another world. I can't now remember why. I, some crazy thing probably Brent or Wallingford did to me or Stephen. But yes, I ended up in jail for a time. And um, I think I might have even been in jail on One Life to Live at one time. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, it, you know, you do a lot of shows and it's hard at my age <laughs> to, to remember my name, let alone all those shows, but I, all those I, shows. I, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know uh, some fans were asking about Felicia's husbands, um, oh. William Gray Espy. Yes. Yes. He, he, he would make love in a bed with me very few times. Thank God. <laughs> because, and the reason I say thank God is that he would always bring his golf club with him to the bed. And I can't tell you how sad that would make me. I, I, I don't have a lot of that kind of feeling about myself, you know, like I'm a bombshell or I don't. I just don't have anything like that. And it would hurt my feelings. And I would go to my room and I would cry. I think, my God, he probably just hates doing these scenes with me. And I just hated that. Um, but a very interesting actor and, and really simple and, and has a depth that I thought was just so great. And because simple, I'm not. So I, <laughs> I always love that in somebody else. And um, now, I loved him, but his and his whole way of life was about not collecting anything. He wanted to keep his life completely simple. And so he didn't buy a lot of stuff. He didn't own a lot of stuff. And as the years went on, I, I would think, you know, he's probably a lot smarter than I am because that's that's an interesting way to 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 live and to 
not be burdened with responsibilities like that. And he ended up leaving the work and uh, taking care of his mom, who was mm. it? Yeah, yeah. Who, nice. who was the love of Felicia's life? Oh, that was John Aprea. John Aprea was the love of her life. And he and I are still lovers in, <laughs> in spirit. My oh. husband loved John Aprea. <laughs> Frank loved John Aprea. He Everyone loved John's loved green John husband. Yes. I love that. Well, speaking uh, of Frank, how did you meet Frank? He hired me for a light day oval pads commercial. And one he day, worked in advertising? He did. He was an advertising executive and he came out to California. And I went in for the audition. I was working a lot in primetime TV. And um, I went in and I didn't have a picture to bring. I'm not sure why I didn't, but I didn't. And I got a call back. So I brought a baby picture of myself and he thought that was so adorable i was hoping he would think that was adorable because he was very cute and um he asked the casting director if i was married because i wore a ring that looked like a wedding band and she said no no she's not married and he said oh really so i uh, ended up getting the part and I went to the audition or the uh, wardrobe fitting in those days. This is how far back this was in those days. You brought three outfits with you and um, they didn't furnish clothes and they would pick one of your outfits to wear. And so uh, I brought mine and, and he's there at the wardrobe shoot, which I thought was strange. And um, he said to me, listen, if you and your- he, husband, he, knew what, he knew what he was doing. He knew it, <laughs> he did, he knew what he was doing. He didn't know if I was married or not though, at that point. And he said, uh, if your husband and you would like to come to hockey tonight, I have tickets and would you like to come? And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, one, I'm not married. And two, um, I can go with you tomorrow night, but I can't go tonight. And he said, hockey's not every night. And I said, oh, I know that. <laughs> wow. Was that my cool line of the day? Now, not wait, it. it gets better. And now the next day comes, the day he's supposed to pick me up and take me to dinner. And I've tried to call six times, left six messages. He's never called me back. He ends up at my front door and he's got six red roses in his hand. And I said, you didn't get any of my messages? He said, oh, I got all of them. I said, why didn't you call me back? He said, I was afraid you were going to cancel. And I didn't want, I wanted to come. <sighs> and he said, in here, this is for you. And I said, thank you. Six red rock. It was strange. It was like this little bouquet. And he said, it's only because nothing was open. So I called room service. And every time they brought me something, they'd bring one red rose. So I ordered <laughs> I ordered six times to get you at least six of them. Now, how do you not fall in love with that? You fall in I love mean, the, with all of that. Yeah. Every, Everything. Showing up. You can't help. Flowers. I, I, was, I was a goner and I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and and for, for two years, three years, we went back and forth. He lived in New York. I lived here. Uh, not here. I lived in yeah, California was, and California. I was working a lot. So, um, And then finally, one day, we decided... I was going to come to New York. Broke my parents' heart. Hard for me to do. Um, very close. I was very close to my family, and um, and I went to New York. The rest is history. Yeah, that then, that is incredible. He had his um, he had his anniversary of his death, September fifteenth. Uh, oh, I'm September. sorry. Thank you. Seventeen years. Wow. And, um, you know, and, and when you're me and and you're full of life and and happiness and joy and, you know, everybody thinks I should have a mate. And I always say to them, I, I had a mate. I had him. I had him. And how bad would I feel sitting across from a lovely man who decided he wanted to go out with me and, and all I'm doing is comparing him to Frank. I mean, that's mean. I don't need to do that. I, I, I'll see him again in heaven. You know, he'll be busy with the World War II guys, but that's okay. He'll eventually come and see me. <laughs> he'll come find you. <laughs> he will. Um, he'll come find me. Do you do something special that day for yourself and him? I do something that I do every year. I sit in my garden 
it's an herb garden. I have several gardens at my house here and I have a 1710 house uh, and oh, wow. it's filled with all the stuff that was, that happened in 1700s. And uh, I take a, I get a glass of uh, a drink and I play music uh, and I open the doors from the kitchen and also from the other house. There's two houses that are put together as one big house. And I play all my favorite um, stereo music that Frank has bought me over the years, like uh, Jimmy Durante and, oh, I just, there's so many, of course, Sinatra. And I cry and I cry. And I miss him most on those days. And, um, and it took me a long time to get, to get to a place where I could stop crying for a day. And it took me almost three years to, to, to somehow get a handle on it and, and, and stop making it so sad and remember all the happy stuff we did and the fun we had. And so, um, you know, now that's where I, I sit and I spend my time. But on that special day, the day that I lost him, it's a day for me to just. Yeah, I go. heard you when you told Michael Fairman when you were at Guiding Light, I think you said you went back to your dressing room and cried. Uh, you know why? Because I knew everybody there. Another world had been canceled. All the Proctor guys and, and you know, the camera guy. I knew yeah. them all. I knew their wives and their kids. We were a really close family. And and I, I would m talk to them and find out how they were doing and what they were doing and all that and go back to my room and cry um, wow. because it was so lonely in those days without Frank because he was besides being my husband and my lover and and my friend he was my he was my anchor mm -hmm. I I I I I, I told him everything. I asked for his advice in everything I did. So without him, I felt alone and afraid. And it was a dreadful time. And everybody said to me at the funeral and the mass and all, the whole thing, oh, Linda, you're so strong, you're gonna be fine. And, and, I, and I didn't think I was. I just didn't think I, I could do this. So everybody grieves you know, differently and in yeah. their own way. Yeah. We really do. We do. We do. Yeah. And unfortunately, we have to. It's a part yeah. of life. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, now that I'm so old, it, I, occasionally, I don't really spend much time on it, but occasionally I think, wow, I'm really getting up there. I'm, you know, two years away from 80. And I think... Wow. You look incredible. Well, you're kind, but you know what I mean? It's like, God, yeah. I don't have a hell of a lot of time left here. <laughs> Not is there I anything you still want to do? Me wrong. Right. Is there so, anything you still want to do? I'd like to do a Christmas movie for Hallmark. I am Mrs. Christmas. Any uh, of my friends will tell you that. I, I give that, some The house gets party. Decorated and oh my, every room, every, trees everywhere. And well, and, I wanted to ask you. You said the house is seventeen uh, hundreds and everything in it. Are right. you an antiquer? Is that I how am. you get all that? I am. I am. I ha. I. I really am. And um, not so much anymore because I don't need anything. I mean, uh, <laughs> I've, I've got enough full. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, but it's so fun. I love it. Well, again, it's like doing a house. You know. So I have a real thing for it. Um, right. But yeah. Christmas is my favorite time of the year besides Thanksgiving. And um, I just, I love it. I so look forward to it. I love the snow. I love living in the East. I just love it. I love it. So it was a great decision to move East. Absolutely. I was, yeah. meant, I was meant to live here. I really was meant no, to. That, that's, that's great. Another fan had said his earliest memory is uh, when you were on an episode of Chips now, you talk about your 20th Century Fox. I know because you did Charlie's Angels, I did. Chips possibly. Those were all 20th shows. Did yeah. that happen because of that contract? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. 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 Chips, uh, not Chips, but um, Charlie's Angels. 
I, I, you know, I always want to read lines with people. I, 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 I have to. I can't do it in a mirror at home. I have to. I need to run it with people. So, when I got there, and, and the girls, they're so consumed with the the hair and the makeup and their outfits, and they're all so beautiful. And I'm, I'm over there trying to learn these lines, and they, are, they have no idea who I am, and and I'm, I'm nervous as hell. And I, and and finally after, you know, four or five days of working on the show, I finally said, hair, makeup. I started to do what they did. <laughs> Nobody would, uh, no one would work with me and run lines. And, and it was so, it was so like out of some, some movie, all of a sudden a red convertible came rolling in with a big bow on it. And, and it was Alan Ladd's son who gave it, gave this gift to his wife, who was one of the angels. Cheryl Ladd. Yeah, yeah, it was just, it was just, yeah, it was just surreal, the whole experience. Well, and Jacqueline Smith, who is like my yeah. childhood idol, played right. you because you right. were being, uh, you know, somebody was after the character you played. You were playing a newscaster. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Oh my God. But you know, it it was just though each of those things, all of them, was just unbelievable in its own if you take it out and dissect it and look at it and go, How the hell did I get through this? Uh, it's so I interesting because I didn't realize contracts like that mm. you actually got guest star roles on on shows which is yeah. kind of cool uh, kind of cool yeah, yeah. If, if you weren't so terrified i was terrified so <laughs> for me nothing about it was cool i just couldn't <laughs> wait for it to be over not even the paycheck no not even no you know why because i was given a salary a weekly salary so whatever i did it came out of that so you didn't get some nice check and and so there was no real gratification about this right. other than you felt terrible about yourself. Um, yeah, yeah. I met Richard Crenna at 20th. Uh, he played uh, in, oh, what was the name of this movie? It was, it was with um, famous, famous people. And, um, and I was his secretary and Oh my God! It was I fell twice trying to run from my office into his office and trip twice. Oh yeah, that's how that's how comfortable I was. But <laughs> a nicer man there never was. He, this was the nicest guy ever. And I ended up going down to Washington D.C. with Frankie, and I was being honored as in the Italian um, organization, and all famous Italians all were there uh, on a on a on a stage seated next to each other and um and he was there and of course in those days I was so frightened and hardly spoke to him because I didn't want to bother him or you know be a nuisance or anything and my husband ends up sitting next to his wife at a table and I don't know it because I'm sitting up on the on the on the dais the dais so when I come down to be with Frank, he comes down to be with his wife. And and Frank says to his wife, watch her, just watch her. She's going to make a fool of herself. She so loves you, her <laughs> husband. And I'm so grateful to him. And and I did. I, I looked at him, my eyes were this big. And I said, you have no idea. You saved me. I, I kept falling and... He took me in his arms and he hugged me and he said, you're wonderful and you will always be more and more wonderful. That's so nice. I to cry. I mean, this was Richard Crenna. <laughs> it was just one of the highlights of my career, truly. Well, well, speaking of your career, before I let you go, you know, you just were talking about your age and all of the things you've done. When you look back, what makes you most proud? Wow, that's a tough question, Alan. That's, you know what makes me the most proud? That people remember me for my, my kindness than my work. 
I, I, I really am sincere when I say that it's the people who watch that have always mattered the most to me, truly. And um, I'm grateful. And that, that's the memory that I keep really close. Uh, and then the rest of it is just gravy on top of gravy, on top of gravy. <laughs> You've had a lot of gravy. I've had a lot of gravy. I have. Well, you just said, you know, you and I talked a little backstage, but I think it's so appropriate. You know, Willie Garson just passed away from Sex in the City. And his last tweet was, be kind to one another. Uh-huh. And that's really something we all, you know, yes. you know, be kind to each other. I think that's the best that's, gift. That's the best gift of all. That's the best gift of all. Agreed. And, and I, I'm, a, I'm just, for all of you watching right now, thank you. Really, thank you. Per- perfect way to end. Linda, please thank your friend for getting that phone for you. <laughs> I will, I promise you, Alan. And, 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 and call me anytime. I all will. Right. All right, love. Great to see you, my love. All bye. right. Bye-bye. Stay, bye, everyone. Well. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Linda. Have a great evening. You too. Thanks, everybody, for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the show. No one better than Linda Dano. Don't forget to tune into her Hallmark movie, A Little Daytime Drama, tomorrow, September 23rd. Check your local listings for the time. I believe it's 6 p.m. here on the East Coast, but check your local listings. If you haven't subscribed to The Locker Room on YouTube, please do so. Turn on the little notifications button so you're reminded of all upcoming shows. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I will see you all on Friday for my 200th episode of The Locker Room when Chris Goutman, my boss from As the World Turns, will be here with me. Have a great evening, everybody. Bye-bye.